There is perhaps no greater error in American politics than to believe that the Democratic Party is the party of ordinary working people, the party of the little guy. Democrats don't understand the problems of typical Americans, and ultimately, they don't care. If they did care, they would have repealed NAFTA and a half a dozen other trade agreements a long time ago. They would have never stood by while you were placed into direct competition with slave labor by having imposed tariffs on imports from nations that do not share our values regarding the dignity of labor. They would have stopped the influx of immigration that drives down wages for unskilled labor. They would have eliminated most federal taxes on the wages of middle and working class families. No, the Democratic Party no longer represents working people. As author Camille Paya writes, Though Democrats still claim to speak for the poor and dispossessed, Democrats have increasingly become the party of an upper middle class professional elite, top heavy with journalists, academics, and lawyers, arrogantly detached from ordinary Americans. Since there's little difference between Republicans and Democrats when it comes to doing anything economically substantial for average working Americans, with the kitchen table economic issues that matter most to you effectively off the table and out of the discussion, all that's left is Republicans who at least give lip service to your values and Democrats who sneer at them. Within the confines of that choice, it can be easy to side with the Republicans. But running to the Republicans, who have never really cared for working people simply because they talk, a good game on values, will do nothing to stop the jobs from being shipped overseas or stop the wealth and income from becoming ever more concentrated in the possession of a few. As urged by author Chris Hedges, we must opt out of the political mainstream. We must articulate and stand behind a viable and uncompromising example of leadership that is firmly and unequivocally on the side of working men and women. We must give up the self-delusion that we can influence the power elite from the inside. The working class will be plunged into desperation that will soon rival the misery endured by the working class in third world countries. And the Democratic Party, including Obama and formerly Clinton, and any candidate they would ever nominate, have been, currently are, and will forever continue to be willing accomplices. To that end of opting out of the political mainstream and creating a third choice that does stand unhesitatingly for working Americans, we invite you to consider our presentations, most notably our labor within the common good and international trade and the common good. Then, Consider joining in a mass movement for the common good. Under the auspices of Citizens for the Common Good, make a pledge to a future presidential candidate of $25 or more and get a Citizens for the Common Good yard sign, bumper sticker, or button to let your community know there's a third choice blossoming in America. There was a time when corporations felt a sense of responsibility and assumed a paternalistic loyalty to the community that hosted their operations. Now, with many U.S.-based multinationals reporting earning a significant portion of their revenue from abroad, they have begun to refer to themselves as international firms rather than as American companies. Corporate management now believes it to be improper for an international firm to place the welfare of the United States ahead of that of any other country in which it does business. In contrast, the following short video is a perfect example of the type of high moral character that should be in command of American business, and that will be again if you help us to create that third choice.
Enron is a company uh, that deals with everyone with absolute integrity. On December 2nd, 2001, Enron declared bankruptcy. I respectfully decline to answer the questions based on the protection afforded me under the United States Constitution. Enron essentially was losing money on a cash basis year after year, and yet it was reporting profits. Did we invest all of our 401k in Enron stock? Absolutely. Why is it that you had begun unloading your stock? pretty heavily uh, before that date and yet led the employees to think they should keep buying stock. We learned around 9.30 about the bankruptcy and that we were all being let go. We had 30 minutes to leave the building. For years now we've been hearing about corporate executives who made fortunes for themselves while driving their companies into bankruptcy, costing employees their jobs and sometimes their life savings. Not so at Malden Mills textile company in Lawrence, Massachusetts that invented the fabric Polar Tech. As we reported last year, Malden Mills also filed for bankruptcy protection, but that's the only thing it has in common with companies like Enron. In fact, Malden Mills is known for going out of its way to help its employees, even when the company suffered a shattering setback. It started around 8 o'clock. Explosions boomed into the night. Spectacular general Two alarm. Two buildings alarm. still burning you in the You can still see the orange glow. There's the just sun. no way to quantify this at and this point. And all of this happened, of course, just two weeks before Christmas. The fire that broke out at Malden Mills in the winter of 95 was the largest fire Massachusetts had seen for a century. No one was killed, but the town was devastated. Malden Mills was one of the few large employers in a town that was already in desperate straits. By morning, just about all that remained of the mill was ashes. As you watched the place burn, what was going through your mind? The only thing that went through my mind was, how can I possibly recreate it? Aaron Feuerstein is the owner of Malden Mills. He's 76, the third generation of his family to run the mill. I was proud of the family business and I wanted to keep that alive and I wanted that to survive. But I also felt the responsibility for all my employees to, to take care of them, to give them jobs. And he made a decision, one that others in the textile industry found hard to believe. While the fire was still smoldering, Furistein decided to rebuild right there in Lawrence decided not to move south or overseas as much of the industry had done in search of cheap labor. And he made another shocking decision. For the next 30 days, all our employees will be paid their full salaries. A month later, he held another meeting. We will, once again, for at least 30 days more, pay all our employees the mill was in ruins, you continue to pay your workers. That may be a great moral gesture, but is it a wise business decision? I think it was a wise business decision, but that isn't why I did it. I did it because it was the right thing to do. Some might have said the proper business decision for a 70-year-old guy is to take the $300 million in insurance and retire. And what would I do with it? Eat more? Buy another suit? Retire and die? Huh. No, I, uh, that, that did not go into my mind. That, that was not an option. Not for a second. Have a wonderful day. He kept his promises. Workers picked up their checks for months. Thank you. You're welcome. In all, he paid out $25 million. Aaron Feuerstein became known as the mensch of Malden Mills. A businessman who seemed to care more about his workers than about his net worth. You became a hero for simply doing the right thing is a terrible commentary on the business world. Yes, it is. That at the time in America of the greatest prosperity, the, a, uh, the, uh, the god of money has taken over uh, uh, to an extreme. To what degree is your faith, your religion, uh, responsible for this 
idea of the moral businessman. I think it plays a big role. For guidance, he turns to the Torah, the book of Jewish law. You are not permitted to oppress the working, working man because he's poor and he's needy amongst your brethren and amongst the non-Jew in your community. What's going to be on your tombstone? I don't know. Hopefully it'll be he done his damnedest, you know, that I, 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 I don't give up and I try to do the right thing. American business will never be dominated by businessmen like Aaron Furistein as long as we continue to listen to and vote for the candidates of the Republican and Democratic parties. On behalf of Citizens for the Common Good, we hope you decide to join with us because America needs a third choice.